Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, child of this world, wise than the children of light, huh? He talks about how there's there are people who they, they give advice on something that they haven't achieved themselves. And so he, he says that he thinks that something like the secret is or, or is is documenting the journey to the destination, and not just talking of destination when you haven't gotten there. Something like that. It's like people who have, uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know anything. That's why when I make these videos, I know they're terrible. And I upload them anyway. And I know it's like, I know that even a few months from now or a year from now or years from now, I'll look back and be like all oh, cringe and it's terrible. Well, the reason I do it anyway is because I'm documenting the journey. I'm hopefully that there's a change in me, or at least that you can, we can see, a, see an actual change in me over time. You know, there are many um, successful um, uh, people, or anything, successful uh, businesses, successful channels, YouTube channels, successful things that when they first started out, of course, there was imperfections, you know, even Apple, when they first started out, their first things, there was, there was a lot of imperfection. And, but um, it's a refinement process, that's why you, perfectionism will kill you. It kills me. We, 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 we get stuck in this analysis paralysis. And uh, Damon John says that, analysis paralysis, and he says that, Damon John of FUBU and, and Shark Tank on ABC says, there will never be a perfect time. You can only make time perfect, or but you can make time perfect. That's like a proverb, huh? There will never be a perfect time, you can make time perfect. And people get stuck. And there's another man, I think it was, oh, I can't remember. He, there, there's a ten rules of success for him that uh, Evan, Car Evan Carmichael did. Maybe I'll, I'll include in the description. He talks about um, uh, he talks about. Uh, I have not gotten any sleep. I have not slept, man. I haven't slept on, on, on the on the plane. I've just been on the plane. You know what was interesting? Uh, this is the truth. So uh, the plane wasn't that booked. And so I had, I had three three chairs to myself, a whole row to myself. What a blessing it was. I thank God. And so I, I turned on all three TVs, and I watched three things at, at a time. Instead of doing just one thing at a time. Because I was thinking about Tony Robbins. He says uh, he was at a seminar talking about how many of you have um, seen uh, or rented and seen the, the, the same movie again and again over and over. Um, and then people raised his hand. And then he said, get a life. <laughs> Said, get a life, and that stuck with me. I'm like, wow, yeah, why are we wasting our time to watch them? We already seen them. We watch new things and have new things. We get stuck in these patterns, these habits, like um, 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 autistic people or, or people seniors or you know or anybody, young people who we just get in these habits and they do the same things over and over and over again. Interrupt the pattern is what Tony Robbins says. You know, take a leap year, go travel, um, volunteer, join Peace Corps, you know, go on a mission trip, do anything. Interrupt the pattern. Interrupt the behavior. Disrupt it. Get out of your comfort zone. Say yes to more things. Take uh, different classes. You know, take an improv class. Take a, you know, like, I don't know, cooking class. Especially cooking class. Take a health class. Interrupt the pattern. I have not gotten enough sleep. Anyway, on the plane, I had three TVs on. And I, I saw a little bit of... Um, Marlon Brando and Shukar Nazar, that was too painful to watch. Because I saw myself in him. You know, when I was a young kid, I, I have always had rage and a temper. My, my dad did too. I'm telling you, after six years, POW, you don't know, you know that, that changes a man. And so he drank, and then terrible things happened, and my, mom, my mother left him. Even as a little young kid, I, 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 um, I don't want um, to. I must have been just a few years old, you know, maybe five, six, seven, or something like that. And uh, my parents, you know, in the, I remember Sean Penn I guess I hit, hitting my sister with a stick or something, and, and uh, my mom and dad should have corrected me. Instead, my mom was like, she was, she was, she coddled me, and my father was, um, he had all the demons from the war. I don't blame them one bit. They have given me so much, and I love them. And I have just honored them more than anything. But I can't, you have to forgive yourself, okay? You have to forgive yourself. 
like you know, Matt Damon's character in uh, Good Will Hunting, and Robin Williams plays the, the psychologist and the therapist, and he comes and he says, Will, it's not your fault. And he's like, I know. But he pushes it, and he gets in his comfort zone and says, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And he really digs it. It's not your fault. And finally, it breaks. Finally, they make a breakthrough. In therapy, when you make a breakthrough, it's just... I need therapy. I need counseling. You know, many people who, who are counselors and therapists, psychologists, you know, were, were hurt themselves. And so even Robin Williams' character in that, he had a um, personal experience with um, an abusive father or stepfather as well. But you, we can turn, when life gives you lemons, turn into lemonade. You know? And, and, and our greatest, and Tony Robbins says that our greatest pain can become our greatest asset, and our greatest gifts, if we know how to use them. And if we know how to use it. Marlon Brando turned his pain into art. But of course, the demons um, still haunted him. And it affected his kids. That's why Dr. Kellogg, in his book, Plain Facts for Old and Young, there are certain people who should not have kids. Those uh, of, you know, with like really terrible diseases who will pass on disease to kids, you know, adopt. Those, um, yeah, they are people who widely too too much in age shouldn't shouldn't marry and then have kids, and because the, you know, the older person will live longer because of it, but the younger person will, will lose vitality and other issues that come with that, of course. Uh, my mother and father, um, I think, 16 years uh, difference, but um, but even if it does happen, of course, God can turn. Nick, Nick was sick, no arms, no legs. You know, God can turn the weakest among us into something so great. And God, He's Desmond Doss. He delights in using things that, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the base things of the world and things that are hated and things that are not, to bring to nothing the things that are. <laughs> the wise and the prudent, that no flesh of glory in his presence. I don't know. So, the things in our life that we, we, we think are our demons that will burden us, that we think we can never ever fix, that we think are just negative, terrible things. We can turn, turn lem you know, lemons into lemonade, water into wine. God does it, the Lord does it. So, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. Marlon Brando, yeah, I saw myself in him, that rage. I was raged in school. Raged. I said terrible things to um, to teachers. I think for some reason. Yeah, yeah. I have rebelled against authority, of course. I still do. But hopefully, in more healthy ways now. I don't know. Or against the right authorities. Preach the message. Preach the word. Say it boldly, but say it in love. That's what Pastor Doug said, mighty men of God. Say it boldly, but say it in love. He, he's, he, Pastor Doug, he said, have you ever been in, in a situation, in a room, where somebody says something, and the whole room goes silent, and it's just heavy, and it's like, wow. I remember one time, uh, we were discussing doing a health fair. Yeah, we're just kids. I was, I was you know, 27, we're just kids. Someone, someone said that, oh, no, no, we shouldn't put our name up. Some of the they know who we are, and, and, you know, we want to hide away who we are. We're ashamed of who we are. We, no, no, but it's because we, no, no, because, no, no, I think the real reason is that because we don't want to scare people away is, is what the motive was there. We want to bring people in, and so, you know, try to catch them by guile or something. And, but, I, I, you know, and sometimes that works, and, and, it's, and it's, you know, and it's um, um, appropriate. To, to not just, 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 you have to, there's steps. You can't just say everything all, all at once. It's like, oh, you know, here's the beast of Revelation. Oh, here's the mark of the beast. No, you have to build up. And, and Paul, the Apostle Paul did that. He, he didn't mention Jesus. He says, okay, just looking at the Old Testament prophecies and uh, saying what the, who and you know, what the Messiah was, the nature, nature of all that. And then um, finally, at the end of it, you know, in the same way we do it in our seminars. But I said in that meeting, when, when, when someone had said, no, let's not put our name up. You know, just some, some generic health fare by who knows who. It's like the Ten, the Ten Commandments about the fourth one. Well, then 
who, who, who's by what authority of, of these laws? They're just random. Don't kill? Okay, fine. But by what authority? Who, who made these laws? Who? The only one that says who is, is the fourth one. The only one that, 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 that makes any sense, gives it any gravity, any substance, any, like, this is from who it is. Like, who has the right to, to say I can't kill? It's only in the fourth, fourth commandment. So, um, I said this. I said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I am not ashamed of the name that the Lord has given us. Seventh day at Venice. And the room went quiet. <laughs> and, and then finally someone said, oh, you yeah, know, but we'll have an, our name up. And then I, I, I lightened it up and I, I smiled up and kind of went goofy again, as I am. Like, oh, okay, that's all I meant. That's all I wanted. Because I didn't want the other person to feel bad. I mean, that's all I meant. But of course, the other person had get good motives. And they had a valid point. Because again, like I said, I'm just, I'm not, you have to build up. Anyway, I'm going to end, uh, end that on that note. Speak the truth. Do not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ and who we are and the name that he has given us. And um, speak the truth in love. Salah.